If you saw our Project Spooky experience, you may remember this moment towards the end where the church pews get blasted away, and you may have things in your project that could use this sort of effect. Hi, my name is Jason Johnston. I'm a VFX director here at Beyond Effects, and for today's level up tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how this can be set up. Let's dive in. So here in Unreal, I have several tiles here that I've placed on the ground, and we're going to use these and blast them away. So what you want to do is you want to make a blueprint actor. First, put a sphere down. Right now, I've um, attached this material, the transparent material, to it so that we can see it. And then you want to attach a sphere collider to it. The sphere collider is hidden in game. Right now I have the sphere itself visible so that we can see it. What you want to do now is create a custom event. And you can do that by right clicking and typing in custom and whatever you name it is going to be the name of the event that you can call. So I have one set up here called test event. When test event gets called, we are going to play this timeline from the start of it. And so you can um, right click and drop down a timeline. And then if you go inside of it, we've added a float and it's going to take a course of five seconds to go from a value of 0.1 to a value of 13. I'm then going to take the attribute that that is outputting and it's called scale. And we're going to set the world scale 3D of the sphere one to that scale. So over five seconds, it's going to grow from 0.1 to 13. Then to call this event, so first we place the blueprint into the level. You can see I have it here. It's just at 000. And then you want to open up the level blueprint. I have it open right here. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm using a keyboard entry to call that event. The easiest way to set this up is if you go back to your level, you have your blueprint in the level. If you just click and drag and take it into your level blueprint, you will get a reference to that. And if you drag off of it and then type in the name of your event, so in this case it was called test event, you now have the ability to call that. In this case, I already have it set up here, so I'll just delete these. If I press T, it's going to call that test event. And if you remember, what it's going to do is that it's going to basically just grow that sphere right now. And so we'll go back here, we'll press a play. And if I press T, you can see that sphere is growing. So let's go back to the blueprint here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the, um, the rendering of that sphere. So I'm basically just going to make it hidden in game. So now the next thing we want to do is when that sphere grows, it's going to come into contact with each of those tiles. And we want to do something to those tiles as it comes into contact with them. And so that's where this sphere collision comes into play. If you click on your sphere collision, and if you scroll down here to the bottom, you can get all these different events. Now the one I want you to click is on component begin overlap. I have it already here in my blueprint. But you can see there are a lot of other ones that you can do on clicked, on component hit. Um, but for this case, we're going to do on component begin overlap. And what that means is that when that sphere comes in contact with the different objects, let's do something. If we wire this back up. So right now, when that sphere grows, we are going to cast to the static mesh actor. What static mesh actor? Well, if we plug in the other actor, this is the other actor that the sphere is colliding with. So in this case, it would be the tiles. So cast to static mesh actor basically means as the static mesh actor. So as the tile. And so we're going to take that and we're going to plug that into a branch. And a branch is an, like an if statement. And the condition we want to test is if that actor basically the tiles has a tag and in this case I've called it my tag. So by default the actors will not have tags so we want to go in here and search for tag and then you can add a tag and in this case I've added my tag. 
but if you had other objects in here, they wouldn't have that tag. So they wouldn't be affected by this, um, this blast that we're going to add in here. So only actors that get this tag are going to be affected by it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if that actor has that tag, and if that's true, we're going to turn on simulate physics. If we go back here and we search for physics and we uh, click on one of these tiles, you can see I have it turned off for all of these tiles by default. So we're going to turn it on and then we're going to add, add an impulse. And the, the target is all of those tiles and the impulse is going to be 300 on the Z. And then after we add that little Z impulse, we're also going to add a radial impulse so it shoots them out. So the target is the tiles again, the radius is 20,000, and the strength is 500. And the origin is the basically the center point of that radial impulse, and that is going to be the world location of this sphere here. And so now if we compile that, we go back here, press play, if we press T, you can see that we've got the blast going. If we turn that visualization back on and checking hidden in game, you can kind of get a better visual of it all working together. If you wanted to, you could take this Z component and make it pretty low. Maybe let's just do 100 and see what that looks like. Compile that and go back. And you can get a pretty interesting look, almost like a, a shockwave coming from a character. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more breakdowns and tutorials like this.